The World Bank has committed $45 billion to address global food security issues. But will it be enough? With food prices rising by 21% since 2020 and climate change threatening to reduce crop yields by up to 35%, the outlook for 2025 and beyond is grim. This massive investment by the World Bank signals a severe problem that's coming our way. The stark reality is that our food supply is under threat, and it's not just a distant problem, it's already affecting your wallet and your dinner table. Have you ever heard the term food polycrisis? It's not just a fancy word, it's a stark reality we're facing right now. Imagine a perfect storm where a global pandemic, ongoing conflicts, and accelerating climate change all collide. That's exactly what's happening to our food supply, and it's creating unprecedented challenges. The pandemic disrupted supply chains and changed consumer behavior. Conflicts like the one in Ukraine have cut off critical food exports. In climate change, it's making crop yields more unpredictable than ever. These factors aren't just adding up, they're multiplying each other's effects, creating a crisis unlike anything we've seen before. But how bad could it really get? According to the World Food Security Outlook, by 2025, we could see a staggering 943 million people facing severe food insecurity. That's nearly a billion people who won't know where their next meal is coming from. It's a number so large, it's hard to comprehend. But it's the reality we're heading towards if things don't change. You might be thinking, sure, but that's a global problem. It won't affect me, right? Unfortunately, that's not the case. This crisis isn't hitting everyone equally. The gap between income groups is widening, and it's the low-income countries that are expected to suffer the most. While some upper-middle-income countries might see slight improvements, the overall trend is grim. But there's another factor that's making this situation even worse. Fertilizer prices. You might not think much about fertilizer in your daily life, but it's crucial for food production. And right now, fertilizer prices are soaring. Production disruptions and geopolitical conflicts have sent prices skyrocketing, threatening both food affordability and availability. The World Food Program puts it bluntly. Conflict, economic shocks, climate extremes, and soaring fertilizer prices are combining to create a food crisis of unprecedented proportions. These high fertilizer prices aren't just a temporary blip, they could lead to reduced agricultural outputs for years to come. And it's not just far-off countries that are feeling the pinch. The World Bank reports that domestic food price inflation remains high, affecting a significant majority of low- and middle-income countries. This means that even if you live in a relatively wealthy nation, you're likely to see the effects at your local grocery store. What's more, the financial needs for safety nets in low-income countries are escalating rapidly. This puts additional strain on global resources and highlights the urgent need for effective policies to address rising food insecurity. So, what does this all mean for you? Understanding these factors is your first step in preparing for what's coming. The food polycrisis isn't just a distant problem. It's a looming threat that could impact your daily life sooner than you think. Imagine you're at the checkout and your usual grocery haul costs 50% more than last year. Your heart races as you fumble for your wallet, wondering if you have enough to cover the bill. This scenario isn't just a bad dream. It's becoming reality for many Americans, and it's a sign of deeper issues in our food supply chain. You might think this is just inflation at work, but it's much more complex than that. The rising prices you see at the grocery store are like canaries in a coal mine, warning us of a looming crisis in our food system. Let's break down what's really happening behind those price tags. Since 2020, U.S. grocery prices have skyrocketed by nearly 21%. That's a significant jump in just a few years. But here's where it gets even more concerning. Wholesale food prices have grown by about 50% since 1999. This long-term trend shows that the problem isn't just recent inflation. It's a systemic issue that's been building for decades. Why is this happening? It's not just one factor, but a perfect storm of challenges. Climate change is making crop yields more unpredictable. Global conflicts are disrupting supply chains, and now we're seeing a new threat, trade restrictions. Did you know that 19 countries have implemented 27 food export bans? These restrictions are like throwing gasoline on a fire, worsening the global food crisis. When countries hoard their food supplies, it creates a domino effect. 
Prices spike, availability plummets, and suddenly that can of beans on your shelf becomes a lot more valuable. But it's not just about the food on your plate. These rising prices have far-reaching consequences. The World Food Program estimates that over 333 million people are facing acute food insecurity in 2023. That's a staggering increase from pre-pandemic levels. And as prices continue to rise, this number could grow even higher. You might be thinking, well, I can afford to pay a little more for groceries. But here's the thing. Food price spikes are like seismographs for the entire food system. They register much larger dramas elsewhere and sometimes suggest more tectonic changes underway. In other words, your rising grocery bill isn't just about your wallet. It's a warning sign of bigger problems on the horizon. Take fertilizer prices, for example. You probably don't think much about fertilizer in your daily life, but it's crucial for food production. The war in Ukraine has disrupted global fertilizer production, causing prices to soar. This doesn't just affect farmers, it affects every single person who eats food. Higher fertilizer prices means higher food prices, and potentially lower food availability. And it's not just low-income countries feeling the pinch. The World Bank reports that domestic food price inflation remains high in many countries, including high-income nations. This means that no matter where you live, you're likely to feel the impact of this global food crisis. So, what does all this mean for you? Your rising grocery bill is an early warning sign of a much larger problem. It's telling you that our global food system is under stress, and that stress is only going to increase in the coming years. Now that we've seen the warning signs, it's time to take action. Food security isn't just a global issue. It starts in your own home. We're going to build your personal food security plan step by step. Step 1. Diversifying your food sources. Think of this as not putting all your eggs in one basket. Relying solely on supermarkets leaves you vulnerable to supply chain disruptions. Instead, explore local farmers' markets. You'll find fresher produce, support local agriculture, and reduce your dependency on long-distance food transportation. Have you ever considered community-supported agriculture? It's like subscribing to a local farm. You pay up front and receive regular deliveries of fresh, seasonal produce. This not only ensures a steady supply of food, but also helps you eat more varied and nutritious meals. But why stop there? Start a home garden. Even if you only have a small balcony, you can grow herbs or vegetables in containers. Imagine stepping outside to pick fresh tomatoes or lettuce for your salad. It's not just about food, it's about reconnecting with what you eat. Step 2. Learn food preservation techniques. Remember how our grandparents used to can fruits and vegetables? It's time to revive those skills. Canning allows you to store seasonal produce for months, even years. But don't stop at canning. Explore dehydrating and fermenting, too. Dehydrating is perfect for fruits, vegetables, and even meats. It's energy efficient and produces lightweight, compact food that's ideal for storage or emergency situations. Fermenting not only preserves food, but also enhances its nutritional value. Plus, homemade sauerkraut or kimchi adds variety to your meals. Step 3. Build a strategic food stockpile. This isn't about hoarding. It's about smart planning. Focus on nutrient-dense, long-lasting items. Think beans, rice, canned fish, and dried fruits. But don't just buy blindly. Plan your stockpile around your family's dietary needs and preferences. Rotate your stockpile regularly. Use the oldest items in your everyday cooking and replace them with fresh stock. This way you're always prepared without wasting food. And remember, a food stockpile isn't just for emergencies. It's a buffer against short-term price spikes or supply issues. Step 4. Develop a network for food sharing and bartering within your community. In times of crisis, your neighbors can be your greatest asset. Start by getting to know them. Organize community potlucks or garden-sharing programs. These connections can evolve into formal food-sharing networks. Consider starting a neighborhood food co-op. By pooling resources, you can buy in bulk, reducing costs and increasing your collective food security. And don't underestimate the power of bartering. Your excess tomatoes might be worth their weight in gold to a neighbor with too many eggs. Step 5. Stay informed about local and global food trends. 
Knowledge is power, especially when it comes to food security. Keep an eye on weather patterns that might affect crop yields. Follow news about trade policies and global conflicts that could disrupt food supplies. But don't just focus on potential problems. Stay informed about innovations in agriculture and food production. New technologies or farming methods could provide opportunities to enhance your food security. Remember, implementing these steps isn't just about preparing for a potential crisis in 2025. It's about building resilience for any future food challenges. By taking control of your food supply, you're not just securing meals for your family, you're contributing to a more stable and sustainable food system. The 2025 food crisis isn't a one-time event. It's a wake-up call for long-term change. As we've seen, the challenges facing our food system are complex and interconnected. Climate change, population growth, and resource depletion are creating a perfect storm that threatens global food security. But here's the thing. We can't just prepare for 2025 and call it a day. We need to think bigger, and we need to think longer term. Have you ever considered how your food choices today might impact the world's food supply in 10 or 20 years? It's a sobering thought, but it's also an empowering one. Because while the challenges are great, so are the opportunities for positive change. Let's start with sustainable agriculture. This isn't just a buzzword. It's a critical strategy for ensuring long-term food security. Sustainable farming practices work with nature, not against it. They focus on preserving soil health, conserving water, and promoting biodiversity. Why does this matter? Because climate change has already reduced agricultural productivity by 30 to 35 percent. By supporting sustainable agriculture, we're not just protecting our food supply, we're fighting back against climate change itself. But sustainable agriculture isn't just about large-scale farming. It starts right in your own backyard. Remember those community gardens we talked about earlier? They're more than just a source of fresh produce. They're a model for resilient local food systems. Community gardens bring people together, teach valuable skills, and create a buffer against food shortages. They're like miniature food factories, turning unused urban spaces into productive oases. Imagine if every neighborhood had its own community garden. Picture yourself walking down the street, seeing your neighbors tending to tomato plants and harvesting fresh lettuce. This isn't just a nice idea. It's a powerful way to build food resilience from the ground up. But community gardens are just the beginning. Local food initiatives can take many forms. Farmers markets, food co-ops, and community-supported agriculture programs all play a role in creating a more resilient local food system. These initiatives shorten the supply chain, reducing the risk of disruptions. They also support local economies and help build stronger communities. Now you might be thinking, this all sounds great, but what can I really do to make a difference? More than you might think. Your choices as a consumer have power. Every time you buy locally grown produce or support a sustainable farm, you're voting with your wallet for a more resilient food system. But your influence doesn't stop there. We need to advocate for policies that support food security and sustainable agriculture. This might sound daunting, but it can be as simple as contacting your local representatives or joining a community food security group. The World Food Program emphasizes that good governance and political will are necessary to address the underlying causes of hunger and ensure food systems are resilient. Your voice matters in shaping these policies. Here's something to consider. Effective monetary and fiscal policies are crucial for restoring stability and supporting vulnerable populations facing food insecurity. By advocating for these policies, you're not just helping yourself, you're helping to create a more stable food future for everyone. But let's bring this back to you and your community. The World Food Program states, if communities are not empowered to withstand shocks and stresses, this could result in increased migration and possible destabilization and conflict. This underscores the importance of building resilience at the local level. It's not just about having enough food, it's about creating strong, adaptable communities that can weather any storm. So, what does building long-term resilience look like in practice? It means diversifying your food sources, learning to grow and preserve your own food, and building strong community networks. It means staying informed about food issues and being willing to adapt your habits. And most importantly, it means thinking beyond your own plate to consider the broader food system. 
The 2025 food crisis isn't just a distant threat. It's a reality we need to prepare for now. But here's the good news. With the right preparation, you can ensure your family's food security. Remember the five-step plan we discussed? It's time to put it into action. Start diversifying your food sources today. Learn one new preservation technique this week. Begin building your strategic food stockpile, even if it's just a few extra cans each shopping trip. Reach out to your neighbors and start building that community network and stay informed about food trends, both local and global. Every small step you take makes a big difference. In a world of uncertainty, your ability to feed yourself and your loved ones is true wealth. So, what will your first step be? Speaking of stockpiling, click the video on screen now to learn more about food the Red Cross urges to stockpile.